Mary Jane, how's it going? It's Tuesday, January 30th, and we are quite blessed today with the presence of the one and the only Miss Charlo Green. Charlo, thank you so much for coming through. Ah, thanks for having I'm fucking shit up already. Can I say that? Can I say that? <laughs> Well, we, whether we can or not, we've said it already. Can I, I say it again? Should I curtail my language? Should we watch what we're saying? Or is this like a forum for Charlo, open discussion? We are Freedom First. We are Freedom First production here right. at about that time. We are also not uh, opposed to smashing a sign here or there <laughs> when a sign needs to get smashed. Okay. So don't worry. All right. We can be chill, do our thing. Should, speaking of being chill, it's actually 420 on the East Coast for all our East Coast viewers. Shall mm -hmm. we, should, would you like to smoke a joint of some kind? I would. Now, I will let you know, there's actually two options today. We have the with frontal leaf and without frontal leaf option. Are you, are you a frontal leaf kind of lady? I literally have no idea what you're even talking about. Well, I too, in the process of being the host of Mary Jane's About That Time, hey everybody, hey. Um, I learned about the frontal leaf. Okay. Uh, it is a uh, it is a tobacco product. Ah, I didn't know there was an art. I've only ever heard people pronounce it like Fanta leaf. Fanta, they were clearly Fanto, that, wrong again, because it's spelled out with an R. All of you guys are wrong. Well, what I have learned <laughs> is that it, there is actually regional differences. This is we're, there's a bit of cultural cultural anthropology for the smokers out there. You've mm -hmm. got Fanta leaf, Fronto leaf, and I learned from the rapper. Rico Nasty. Don't know if you're familiar with I'm her. I'm a huge fan of her. She was on the show. I saw. Sheets and funnels. That's what they call it. They're smoking sheets and funnels in the DMV. Really? They, they break it up. They put it in their That's joint. So weird. They call it smoking sheets, sheets and funnels. So it depends where you're from, but the tradition is the same. And they do that to spliff it, kind of. It's like a, but it's not wrapped in. Yeah, it kind of spliff it. To spliff it. it. I, exactly. Like with the tobacco That's inside exactly. the weed. That's very well put. Interesting. Oh, you learn things. That sometimes you know. You definitely do. You learn do. and you burn. But yes, I do not do the fronto, so let's fanta, or any. I actually was hoping to spot a backwood on set. Uh oh, uh oh, backwood alert. Uh -oh. Eh, okay, eh, eh. I, I, here's I, my I'll, guy. I'll stand, Mr. I'll stand. Barbados. I'm willing to stand. He got the woods for me. I, I got hey. the woods. I got the woods. Here we go. Here's what we'll do. I like. You do you mind working on a woods? I'll spark this. Okay. Just to get the momentum happening. Okay, he got me working. I, I don't mind it. I feel rude though <laughs> to ask you to roll your own woods. Is that I know. inappropriate? I would not do this to you on the weed with Charlotte Green, but but I am going to roll it because I want it rolled right. You know? Whoa, whoa. And I'm whoa. not even I trying wanna to know throw what that means. I want to know what that, that means. means. Cause what is it? Real what, what does it mean to roll it right? I want well I, you can you can teach me. Okay. It's well, all about learning and burning. I have a little bit of XJ uh, 13 that I just dropped on the floor. Guy, this, this guy. It's this droppy, this is kind of droppy. Droppy <laughs> Tuesdays. Droppy Tuesdays. There's the beginning of something. Okay. There's some more of something. We'll be we'll be good. We'll be good. I think we'll be good. So with like my backwoods rolling it right means that you're definitely getting more wood or more weed than you are wood. It's so all about the weed to wood ratio. It is. And mine, there's um, a much higher weed to wood ratio than most people's. I usually roll at least an eighth into a backwood. Okay. Well, look at this. We're gonna we're gonna break open. We a have, whole new pack. Yeah, we do. We have a we have a nice deal with our good friends at THC Design. Mm -hmm. They make wonderful cannabis. They hook us up with that cannabis. We what's in your weed at them, and um, they um, they were really responsive. It's a brand that I really really like. I think they're doing it right and kind of paving the way a lot. I love the packaging. THC Design. We yeah. can't make this up, guys. Good packaging, mm. good product. Mm -hmm. Touching mm -hmm. hands with the right mm -hmm. people. Charlie yes. Green. About that time. Yes, yes, Mary yes. Jane. This is how we're doing it. We're gonna we're gonna learn like how it. to do the Charlo Green wood <laughs> with a wood to weed ratio that is unmatched in other places, times, or dimensions. Okay. She's got the Mary Jane rolling this? tray. Am I just making myself too at home, or does this work here? Our home is your home, Charlo. Let's just right. be straight up about that. Let's do that. When you're chilling at Mary, at Mary Jane, when you're chilling at about that time, you should be as home as you want to be. All right. I mean, you came in your cool ass slides. You know what I mean? So it's Supreme. already kind of 
time it's a kind of like chill rock your slides <laughs> kind of you know high end tv experience you know, i was I've actually counting on my shoes not being in the shop but since you want to put me out on blast they're supreme anyway I into, I they mean, supreme anyway noah i think so, i mean slides <laughs> slides is really a great look when they're supreme slides it means that you've got a classy slide you know what i mean i think that's, that's just indicative of the lifestyle that we're trying to live and that's a good lifestyle so damn right it is Ruh. Respect. Um, so on Mary Jane's About That Time, we do a little segment called Roll the News. I figure while you're rolling your wood, we could roll the news. And, and you yourself host a wonderful cannabis-related uh, uh, program I do. that I hope everyone out there is already <laughs> watching regularly. You call it cannabis related. It's actually called the weed. It's it called is, the weed, guys. It it's pretty cannabis. direct. I know, like there's there's a lot of people that try to make puns or keep no. super subtle. We're not. Charlo's not trying to play games with you. She's trying I'm to not. tell you what the fuck it is. Yes, we're getting in the weed with Charlo Green. Getting in the weed yeah. with Charlo yes, Green. Yes, yes. So you know all about the cannabis news. I don't need to tell you about the cannabis news. You know no. about it. But this is our news segment called Roll the News. Yes. And you're gonna put some of that magic dust that you got on our Roll the News segment. I'll sprinkle it. I like that. I appreciate you sharing it. <laughs> All right, the number one story comes from China, hmm. um, a country not often associated with the cannabis, given mm -hmm. that their political situation is not necessarily the most accepting of the plant, mm -hmm. if you will, or other types of freedoms uh, that some of us in the United States feel very blessed to have. Yes. Um, so we went and connected with a cannabis collective in China known as Wizman420. Now, cannabis, as many of us know, has been cultivated in China for over 10,000 years, mm -hmm. but the government considers it to be as dangerous as cocaine, thoroughly prohibits its cultivation or use in any form. Um, underground groups, however, like Wizman420, have a secret collective where they share their mutual love of cannabis and its culture through a web platform where everyone shares information. Uh, the crew is gamers, graphic artists, stoners. Uh, they educate Chinese people about cannabis. They create comics. They have a website. They do clothing. And they even have their own custom dab rig. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Fuck the system. You know what I mean, guys? If they ain't, ain't going to let you do it and you really want to do it, sometimes you just got to do it anyway. Yeah. We all know about that. Absolutely. Um, so the project started when the crew created a comic about a kid who becomes a superhero named Wizman420 when he smokes weed. Soon they created other products as well as a library of cannabis information, all considered highly illicit to disseminate by the government. Um, they use a platform known as WeChat, which is kind of like iMessage meets Venmo meets Instagram, uh, to educate people about strains, medicinal use, and how to tell apart fake weed from good weed. Um, so Fake weed? Well, uh, yeah, or shit weed, oh, right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Like, there's no regulations, there's no medical. I mean. China is known for making counterfeit goods of any kind. So I would say that weed is not necessarily out of the realm of things that you could find a fake of in China. You're I pretty much gonna fake right. of anything. I would I mean, say you're right. Rolex is just like the tip of the iceberg. You, you have are. fake Lamborghini mm -hmm. in China if you really want to find it. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> though their location must remain secret, um, they do feel as though um, the founders, Alice and Yoda, they want to promote democracy through cannabis use and transform China into a quote unquote oriental chill land. Respect. Um, so Alice says, this is a great quote, uh, our correspondent Crystal Escosa interviewed her. The most important thing is the freedom of spirit and cannabis is like a symbol of that freedom. <laughs> Guys, China, shout out, Wizman420, Crystal Escosa. That's what we're doing, Mary Jane. We're just chilling in China, I finding finding that. the weed, weed weedy chillers in in the Far East. No, so it's crazy that you guys have your reach all the way out there. Hey, working. I'm just saying, Mary Jane, we trying to be global out here. You know, this is a global movement. It, it has a global history, it is. and I it think does. it has a global future. Yeah. So giving a voice to it. Yeah, That's I appreciate that. Insane. Um, I am I'm actually planning on going over to. I think it's. Japan in a couple of months and okay. we're not going to be bringing any weed. So learning about like where it's a death penalty versus where there are groups that are actively working to create a culture. Yep. Um, that's awesome. This Absolutely. is the first I'm hearing Absolutely. about this. Have you traveled to Asia before? I haven't. Okay, that's very exciting. Then. Yes. What prompted your interest in traveling to Japan? Um, my boyfriend is... Korean, but he got his 24 or 23 in me back, and it said he's like 5% Japanese. So. so he's exploring his roots. Exactly. I like that. That sounds like a romantic, yeah. kind of culturally enlightening journey. 
It should be interesting. I'm just really um, interested in checking out the weed culture place. Okay. Yeah. Weed culture in Japan. Um, there definitely is one, for surely. I'm gonna call a party foul. Hold on a second. Party foul. Let me show you this backwood. He has me trying to break. He has me trying to look crazy in front of all of you guys. Is there this only one in there? Crispity crotchety, my nigga. Yo. Well, I do will say. you see this? I cannot. Guys, look, do you hear the crackage? Not... Let me put it next to my microphone. You, did you hear that? Guys, did you hear the we had a, crack? We gave Charlo is, a dry ass back. Who did one. this? Who did Barbados, this? Barbados, I thought you had my back. Uh oh, it's Barbados' facility. <laughs> okay. We will say, I don't need to pass the buck. I've been known to dodge responsibility <laughs> on occasion. Should we look at this other pack? Do you think this. We have to. Fingers crossed, Charlo. I don't want to make I don't want to make this a double fail. Let me feel the back. See, you feel that? Are you? you I think feel a, there's a little give there's there. A little, there's exactly. a little give. That's what we're. We hoping might be for. dealing with That's a better situation in this other pack. I'm sorry that we had to put you through that first experience. <laughs> no, I know you guys were just doing the initiation. Seeing if I was really one. Yeah, you know, I wanted to make sure that you knew what's what. That was like a little <laughs> secret test. Gotcha. I see you now. Gotcha. I see you. A little test, Charlo. But yeah, you shout out to it. all those activists out. That's incorrect. To be the first doing something Pioneering. in a nation known for not allowing people to exercise freedoms and liberties, those that's yeah. pioneering in its truest form. Wisdom and Short 420, shout out. From myself, yes, from yes, about yes. that time, from Mary Jane, from Charlo Green. Yes. That's a pretty big fucking shout out. So <laughs> you can say, Yes. Multi layered cake. Keep doing what you're outs. doing. You are what you're literally doing. saving millions of lives. And opening That's people's incredible. eyes. Opening yes. people's eyes. Now, I myself, I've traveled to the China. Yeah. Uh, I lived, How is the China? It's pretty great. Uh, I lived there for a year when I was a younger gentleman. Um, and there was a weed culture there because, you know, they border on uh, the Central Asian states like Uzbekistan and. Um, all of that, and so there's sort of the uh, the hash culture there is actually quite evolved right. because the Uyghur minority uh, who are part of the Central Asian area of China uh, have that history in their culture. So, mm. um, you know, China, it's a cool place, and there's some weed stuff going on there, pioneered by Wizman420. Now, story number two, on Mary Jane's, roll the news. Why is Bogart, what is Bogarting, and why has the stoner slang stuck around? Guys, <laughs> many of us are familiar with the phrase, don't Bogart that. But where does that come from, and why do we say it? Is it, it? like a Humphrey Bogart thing? It is a Humphrey Bogart really? thing. We're going to break it down for you. Now, okay, I'll come. from the top, this story is reported by Patrick Lyons for TheMaryJane.com. Ever since the late 60s, fam act famed actor Humphrey Bogart's last name has been commonly used as a verb among stoners. There's no evidence to suggest that Bogart was ever a smoker himself. So how did the slang develop and why has it persisted throughout pop culture? Bogart rose to fame in an era before marijuana depiction was commonplace. He reached his peak in the early 40s with starring roles in iconic movies like Casablanca. Inseparable from Bogart's image was the omnipresent cigarette dangling out of the side of his mouth. <laughs> When he spoke, the sig bobbed around like an expressive extra appendage. Eventually, someone acted like Bogart during a joint cipher, and the slang term was born. And we have more exhibits. <laughs> Exhibit B, in 90s rap, the next culturally prominent place that Bogart popped up as slang was, for whatever reason, East Coast rap in the 90s, Redman. One of the most weed-centric rappers of all time was one of the first to pick up on the usage dropping a Bogart in his 94 track, Don't Mind. Eventually, everyone from Ghostface to Guru from Gangstar used the term, making it a staple of 90s hip-hop culture. Guys, if you, if you don't know about this, please spend your day on Spotify. Listen to some records, knowledge yourself, listen to some great Bogart-related rap. You'll have a great day. This is a Tuesday. What else are you doing? Is this an original Mary Jane story? This is an original Mary Jane how com story. Guys, how much weed are you smoking during your pitch meetings for you to even come up with this? I'm never like, where does the Bogart term cut? Like, we, we you have answers. Learning and burning, you have Charlo. Answers. We have a policy, and that policy, numero uno, <laughs> is learning and burning. So if we can bring those two together, that's the happy medium we always seek to achieve. I love it. Number three, exhibit C, modern usage. Bogart has become watered down in recent years and is no longer used solely in discussions of weed. It's become so ingrained in culture that it's actually become a legitimate synonym for hogging anything. 
registering with a much wider audience than its initial stoner circles. Almost all recent usages in popular music are not in direct reference to joints, blunts, or smoke sessions, but rather hogging or overusing something in general. Examples of rappers using Bogart, but not in reference to weed, include Little Uzi's verse Unfazed, Kendrick Lamar's verse on ASAP Rocky's One Train, Rocky's own Pretty Flacco, 21 Savage's Numb, and Eminem's No Love, all of which have dropped in the last 10 years. <laughs> What do you think of that? I think it's, so you're saying it originated as a cannabis term. It originated as a cannabis term. Now it's been more broadly applied mm. in the realm of hip hop as just meaning, you're, you're hogging my shit, man. That's, it's interesting. I don't, don't I didn't Don't know hog that. people's shit. Don't bogart people's shit. <laughs> don't hogart people's shit. Oh, it makes so much sense though. I've been using like bogart as like, don't, take my shit, give me my shit, share the shit or whatever for a really long time, just not related to it. But I guess like the Fawfully cigarette and it's not, it all You makes, got me? It all makes right? sense. Right? So it goes from the Bogart to the Bogart to the Bogart, guys. It's learning and Evol learning. Evo evolution is a real thing, folks. Whether it be among creatures of the earth, whether it be around words that we speak, but it's fun to go and dig into these things and find out interesting Ooh. nuanced stories that enlighten us yeah. as to what's been going on. A now, little entomology. Entomology. Charlo, that is a high level of vocabulary word here on uh. About That Time. That may be the first usage ever <laughs> of the word entomology on the program known as About That Time. I fuck with it. I fuck okay. with it super heavy. Shall, shall we partake in, in this here Backwood? Do you do backwood? Oh, I backwood. Okay. I backwood. All right. I mean, as long as you're, oh my gosh. I smoked a backwood with this guy. At a Tony Robbins seminar, it was the lunch break. I shouldn't have been smoking, it was Florida. But um, we smoked like the fattest backwood ever, and he hadn't smoked in maybe a decade. We get inside, 20 minutes later, he literally starts throwing up on himself. And it's, it was- Wait, you and made someone smoke till they puked? And this was at a Tony Robbins seminar. So I'm like probably the youngest person there. Everyone's like businessy and way richer than I am, and this guy's, sitting, not even trying to put it anywhere. And he's just like, Bleh. I was like, I gotta go, bitch. Charlo, <laughs> smoking him till they do. Ah. Guys, be careful. Charlo's a high level smoker. I told you. May not be as casual as you thought. I told you. You sure you got all those cards ready and in order I for the rest cards, of this? I got these cards, these Mary Jane right. cards. We're, put, we're not putting this out. I'm not putting it out. And I'm not smoking it alone. And you're not smoking it alone. Okay. We are smoking together on about that time in celebration of the good time that we all have at this time mm -hmm. of day. What are you guys smoking on? We're live streaming. Here we are. Comment. Making it happen. Know. But we wanted to kick it off. You were yes. you're setting the bar high, so to speak. Now we are. the final story on tonight's installment of Roll the News is actually a story that you yourself just covered on a recent episode of your show. Oh yeah? Yes. It is the passing of Cannabis icon, Dennis Perone. Oh, yeah. Charlo, you know this story. Do you yeah. want to tell the people of Mary Jane a little bit about the Dennis Perone, the famous activist in the cannabis world? Well, um, he's considered one of the godfathers of medical marijuana. Correct. He was one of the active movers and shakers getting, I believe it was the country's first medical marijuana initiative passed in San Francisco. It was during the the hardest times of the AIDS crisis where there was no help coming from the government, no answers, no, no discussion surrounding what was happening, but he and other activists recognized what cannabis could do to help alleviate um, the symptoms of this illness. Um, so after his partner's passing, he went all the way in to make sure that people had um, access. Had access. Now, Charlie, you're starting to make me feel bad because not only did you do my work by rolling the backwoods, but you're also doing my work telling the story better than I could tell it myself. This is what I do. Charlo is a fucking pro, guys. <laughs> there is no question. Not that there was any question before, but the level is so effing high right now this on about that do. time. It's wow. real. It's real, real. No, and Dennis Perone was, I, I stand on his shoulders. At, this blunt is, I mean, every time you spark up, like a silent prayer should be said to all of the activists that fought and have passed um, Guys, making this revolution. If you're smoking out there, 
Today you're smoking one for Dennis Perone, and every time you're smoking one, there's a little bit of Dennis Perone in that blunt or yeah. joint or bong or Where? dab or whatever it is you're smoking on because Absolutely. you want to know why, guys. Our access to this plant and the reason we're not as even more persecuted because there's still a lot of persecution out there is because of pioneers and forefathers like Dennis Perone mm -hmm. who saw ma major issues in his community, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the AIDS crisis right. in the late 80s and early 90s, and he did something about it. That's the other thing that's important. This is not a war that's over, guys. No. Just because here in Cali, we're sheltered and privileged in our access to cannabis, that doesn't mean that that's the case everywhere around the country and everywhere in the brown in the world. Right. There's still people who are suffering without access, with medical conditions that could be addressed by a plant as mm -hmm. opposed to pharmaceutical drugs. I mean, we were just talking about the activists in China. Um, True. But we were asking, what about in the Philippines? What's the penalty there? It's, this is death. That's, cr and it's cray cray. one of more than a dozen countries that have death penalty as the the punishment for consuming cannabis it's crazy so without people like dennis perone who fought when there was no one else to lay the groundwork and say this is how we should be doing things um without him we wouldn't have this we just wouldn't it's true now charlo you have some personal experiences in terms of dispensaries mm -hmm. medical cannabis yeah and run-ins with the law is that, is that are you are you willing to talk he was like run-ins with the law yes. i'm just gonna i mean I guys know. it's like the she, first thing that comes up when you you're sitting me. with a woman who knows a lot about this topic do you want to tell a little people a little bit is this something you can discuss publicly um i mean i can discuss some of it okay tell us tell us what happened um i said fuck it and um we opened up a brick and mortar facility for the alaska cannabis club and the state didn't like it, so they decided to use the ambiguity of the transition between the old laws and the new laws to prosecute me. Um, it's still an open case. I should be going to trial maybe this summer. If I lose, I'll, I could go to jail for 54 years. So like, old gray, no babies, end my life. Probably end it five years in. But um, it's just i mean you asked that's some heavy stuff the guys. smoke is just sitting still this, nothing's yeah, even moving i don't know that everyone anymore. at home gets to see the dramatic <laughs> smoke effects we have here I mean, it's so dramatic th this right is now. a high level production facility <laughs> we you know this is kind of like i don't know whether you know again at home you guys may not see this but this is some like vfx action that not many productions can compete with it was part uh, it was like dun 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 the smoke so so yeah it sucks it's dreary it's like a cloud that follows me but i've literally been on bail since september of 2015 so this is like three years in charlo's on bail guys we have to support charlo <laughs> yeah. this is some bullshit because i feel like charlo is being wrongfully singled out she's a pioneer She's a pioneer like many of the people we sit with, like many people will discuss on this show. But and you, brought, you were bringing something that people wanted in Alaska. Well, needed. We legalized medical marijuana two years after you guys did here in California. Um, in 98, we legalized medical, and the Alaska Cannabis Club was the first legal access point in 2014. So it was something people needed. Um, if they didn't, I wouldn't have felt compelled to quit my job, which I loved the team I worked with I loved but there were people literally dying that only I could have helped so so that's fuck it and the story that followed so hopefully um things work out with my case but up until then I'm doing what I know how to do what I'm a pro at and that's telling great stories and sharing information that can help all of you to shape your communities and make marijuana reform work for your communities and repair the harm that prohibition has wreaked. Yeah, which we all appreciate, Charlo. Hard okay. work, work that requires sacrifice, work that you are now having to really defend yourself around, which mm -hmm. you know, all of us in the cannabis community have your back. Please let it, please let us and plus let the Mary Jane audience and the About Tap Time audience know what we can do to support your cause because we definitely got your back. Um, well. Just ha hang out with you. Follow, yeah, follow just, Charlo. Yeah, Check follow out us. Check Charlo's show. Watch the show, The Engage Weed with, with Charlo her. Green. Um, find us, just search The Weed Show and a bunch of links will come up. I think we're the number one response for that. But search us, find us, follow us when things, because it's been a lot of 
hurry up and wait. Right. And a lot of lawyer stuff happening That's the in the legal background. System, right? Exactly. For the last couple of years. So part of me creating the show and my own platform is to make sure that what information needs to go out when it needs to go out is there, as opposed to relying on mainstream media, which you know, as the editor in chief of Mary Jane, True they guys. don't always get it right. In fact, they usually don't. They're usually hoping to have a punny joke at the end of whatever pot bust they're talking about without looking any further beyond the police report that's been sent by the police. Speaking of puns on the news, yeah. did you see this news clip that was on Jesus and Marrow the other night of the woman covering the Taco Bell clothing? Closing, oh. where people had a vigil for the Taco Bell. Oh, my and she people. kept going, my we're people. going to talk about that. And she goes, this is not show regular story. Oh, okay. That's too much. Yeah, but but you you know about the news business. Is there is there <laughs> is there pun pressure, Charlo? Have you ever been pun pressured? <laughs> no, you actually get points off for that. Like nothing really goes to air outside of like the fuck it thing without another set of eyes and then their eyes bosses set of eyes looking at something and approving it. Um, maybe that was just an ad for Taco Bell. It because had an advertorial. It did of not appeal. feel like a, a but, fucking news story. What does nowadays? But that was just like really, there it was nobody talk, taco, died today. They wanted to talk about it because it was not showed okay. usual story. All right, too here we much. Go. Okay, way too much. All right, Noah. Um, <laughs> Charlo, can we take a couple steps back though? Because how did you end up in Alaska? That's what I really want to know. What is the story um, about Miss Charlo Green found herself well, in the wild world of the Alaskan outback? Well, it all begins in an African jungle. About so just playing, I don't know. Um, my parents are both from Nigeria. They grew up over there. I'm number five of seven first generation American kids that they had here. Respect. Um, they moved around like gypsies. They didn't have like siblings or roots anywhere, so they were just trying to find a place that would work. So I was actually born in Austin, Texas. Um, then after me, she was born in Nevada, and then the sister after her. Um, was born in San Diego, so we're all like a year apart, okay. all seven. Um, and we were there for like five years, and then one of our neighbors got shot in the knee during a, a run by because they were just running by and shooting. Um, and my mom was like, ah, the hood kind of sucks. So we moved to the hood in Alaska, which was less bad. Um, but that's how we got there. The hood in Alaska. Tell me about the hood in Alaska. I need to know about the hood in Alaska. What it's is about? What is that about? It's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the air, the air, I imagine the air smells pretty good. It's probably no. some nice air. I went to school in Texas. Um, okay. Got my degree in Texas. So that's where I moved after Alaska. So I was thinking, you know, this is technically the hood in Alaska. I get to Dallas. I get to Deep Ellum. I get to places in Fort Worth. And it's like, oh, this is the hood. Hood level this up. This is the hood. Okay, level, I'm gonna stay up. on campus. I have been blessed um, all my upbringing. So um, now with more experience in the rest of the world, I know I was really, really blessed to grow up poorish in Alaska, you know? Cause it's still okay. It's still okay. It's very okay. Since I've been traveling internationally and seeing like the hoods in other places like Jamaica. I went there for the High Times Cup they had and got lost on the way to Negril from the airport. I, I cried like the last half of the car ride just like seeing people with no options. It, Nothing. It, Poverty is real. Like we, yeah. we forget that in America because even in places like the Ala hood in Alaska or the hood, hood anywhere. In Alaska. There yeah. Are, there's, you know, there's people in America so that are really worse. hurting, but there's yes. people around the world that really are hurting too. Yes, so really when starving. It's in, when it's in your face. So yeah, it's hard. it was a blessing to grow up in the hood in Alaska. I was a little heathen, but um, got my. Can you tell me anything about that? Um. What's a heathen? What is Charlo the heathen in the hood of Alaska? What is it? What's the, what's the what's the main story you think that summarizes that experience? Most appropriate. Um, if you tried to look up my senior or prom pictures, you wouldn't find them because I wasn't allowed to go. Banned from the prom, guys. Charlo Green, <laughs> banned sick. from the prom. Expelled for half my senior year for inciting a riot. Riot inciting. I don't know that I've <laughs> so ever had a riot. We won't get any further. The Charlo. rest of that is sealed. 
Sealed the rest of that is guys, sealed. But what you need to know is Charlo Green is a certified <laughs> riot starter. I used to turn up. This booty used to twerk, y'all. What do you mean used, it used to? to. I have a it funny, used to. I have a funny feeling that you still know what it, you got to do to make it turn up. I mean, I know how, but I got shit to lose now. More shit I'm on bail. I can't She's do a, none Charlo's of that anymore. On bail, guys. Please. I can't do anything. Don't fuck with her. <laughs> Let her be chill. I Enjoy can't her do life. anything. Okay, you can't do anything. No more riots. <laughs> Stop trying to get her yeah, to start a riot. I'm laying low. That's unfair. I'm now, just laying low. Speaking of starting riots, you were kind of briefly introduced to some of our friends here on the show that were hanging out with us. Bowie the cat, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis the monkey. Dennis the monkey and uh, Pierre the pug over there. That you got Pierre sitting on the couch next to you. Oh yes, now, Pierre, my dog would love you. My everybody dog who's tuned into the show knows that we have special people <laughs> who come and hang out with us, and sometimes we're in need of a creative assist. So, for instance, Dennis the monkey, he was named by cousin Stiz the rapper, hmm. and Bowie the cat was named by Kyle from Portugal Glow Man. Portugal Glow Man, they won a Grammy on Sunday. And so our cat, <laughs> Bowie, was actually named by a Grammy award-winning artist. How do you feel about that? I feel honored to be in their presence. Now, the third person you gotta meet <laughs> is, uh, well, you got Dennis the Monkey, you got Bowie the Cat, you got Pierre the Pug. Yeah, yeah Pierre, Pierre the Pierre, Pug. Pierre, now, Pierre. you, when you first came to the About That Time studio yeah. here with Mary Jane chilling the fuck out. Mm -hmm. You, I mentioned to you like, oh, our, our animals all have names. You've now you've met our homies. And we were like, but we need a name for the gang. And I had said to you, you know, I had mentioned to you some ideas and I think you came up with a pretty good one. What do you think we should call this crew of heathens that manifests itself in animal form around us on About That Time? You had a really good idea. What was that idea? Critter click. Critter, it has a hand <laughs> sign, guys. Gang, gang. This is the critter click. Guys, critter click. Critter click. Gang, it's a gang, fucking bitch. critter click. Guys, if you're not down with the critter click, if you're not down with the critter click, get down with the critter click. Charlo Green blessed us with the name Critter Click. Charlo's Critter Click. Straight the fuck up, guys. This is not a joke. We reel with our critters out here. I know. I was real about guys. that name. Dennis the monkey, Bowie the cat, Pierre the pug, now known as parts of the Critter Click. Critter and we have a hand sign. <laughs> Just like that. It was like, I didn't even have to ask for the hand sign. I was like, can you name it? I know. And you're I, like, yeah, I can name it. I'll and I'll give it a fucking I'll hand sign. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. See, you try to play like you don't know how to incite a riot, but that was basically like inciting a riot. The Critter oh, Click I Riot. I gotta keep it dialed down though. We're when I'm off bail, invite me back. I'm going to bring some bitches, go turn this. <laughs> Guys, when Charlo's off bail, things are going to get real real here on About That Time. I hope you're ready for it because we're not afraid. We're certainly not afraid to take it wherever it's got to get taken. Mm -hmm. And Charlo's kind of like, you know, she's pushing the envelope, which I always, <laughs> always appreciate. So you grew up in Alaska, then you went to Texas. Mm -hmm. Now you're chilling in L.A. You mm -hmm. had a famous moment on the Internet. I did. What what else is going on, Charlo? We need to we need to know another layer of, of the world of Charlo. Are there big picture plans and projects outside of this court case you have pending that you're mm -hmm. really trying to manifest? Because your weed show is definitely one of my favorite programs to tune Thank into you. on the internet. Um, well, there are definitely a lot of things cooking, but what I've learned is it's better to to have them all fully baked, iced, presented before you put anything out there. Guys, Charlo has big shit cooking, but you're gonna have to tune in to find out more. Don't try to get up in her space until things are fully baked and chilled. Don't do it. Bake, chill, serve. Yo. Straight up. There it is. Done. I give, you give. It's a good balance here, guys. I like it. Yeah, we got a, we got a little rhythm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. Hey, hey. Critical. <laughs> Well, Charlo, I'm going to take one super quick step back because I forgot to mention that Roll the News is actually sponsored by The Weekend Box. Oh, I have nice. a beautiful gift bag here for you of wonderful cannabis treats courtesy of not only our sponsor THD Designs, but also our sponsors at The Weekend Box because everyone who comes and hangs with us has to leave happy. You know what I mean? Not that they don't already leave happy, but Weekend Box just for you. I think there's like some... Bat, cannabis, it's heavy. Bath, oh yeah, we I love it. Bath, cannabis bath, are you down in the cannabis basketball game? Are you up on that? 
so now I'm gonna tell you love this, it. this what we are gifting you with is actually a female centric installment of the weekend box. Okay, I believe well, here, called let me, the let me Bella box. Over here, you got your cards if you want to yeah. that. There's yeah, yeah, that. there you go. Let me we, open we, this we, take a look, though. take a look. This is like Christmas. Yeah. THC design, pre-rolls, what up? We got okay. We got we got guys. We got to show you what's in this bell box because this is a this is a special moment. Let's We're see. looking out for our girl Charlo, Let's making see. sure that she's well taken care of. <laughs> All right, we got some tings in here. Ooh. It is the bell box. Ooh, what is this? That's just like getting you in the mix of everything you need nice. to know. Nice. Is there weed in it? Oh, I think I believe that if the rule is there's very few rules in the bells at a time, <laughs> but one rule is there's definitely weed in it. Okay. <laughs> like just so you know the rules. So, uh, so I think we have some bath oh, salts there. No. Packaging. All right, hold on. Yeah, um, real good. No, here, do you want me to hold yes. this? Okay, look. The Bella <laughs> Cream Elegante. Is it rose gold or is that the mood the lighting? bath salt. Or is it's, that me I would projecting say, I, I would say to see? It's a classy rose gold. Oh, I love rose gold. Okay, there's a stress bomb, there's a bath salt, and there's a... Crema Elegante, Crema which is a Elegan hydrating cream formulated to repair Who damaged skin. Who makes this? Bella. Bella is the brand. Bella needs to call sister me. Sister brand of the weekend box. This is so sexy. Our homegirl, Krista Whitley, giving her a shout out. <laughs> Charlo Green, approved. She's a, I mean, yes, I was, I'm getting it. I do an, approve, and I haven't even opened it. Hasn't just opened it. The That's how good alone. it is. Like, I'll just put this near my bath area and stare at it and while I see it. Yeah, you're like, damn, stuff. shit's I about to get really chill. I really like it. So if you guys could send me some to actually use. Or I'll just stare at it. Either way, I'm really what happy with it. What do you mean? This, this. this is no, for you. No, it's you're, pretty. You're, you're, I just want to keep it there, Oh, though. you want more, so you need a second. You know yes. what, Charlie Green? I know, I'm being We're going to get you right? doubles. Is that taggy? We're going to get you doubles. <laughs> do I care? Oh. <laughs> we're getting you doubles. That's, now, this is super dope. Don't. Look, look. Super if it was a, dope. If it was a challenge, I would tell you, but it ain't. We're going to get you doubles. Krista Whitley? Yeah. Shout out, Krista. Friend of the family. Beautiful. Beautiful. Supporting beautiful. about that time. Yeah. Supporting Charlo Green and her this. and her bath patterns. I love this. Bathing, bathing is bathing, guys. Bathing is important. If you were out there and wondering, it's essential. That bathing is essential. Not only important, it is essential, it guys. It is essential. Bathe yourself. Yes. Basic rule. Yeah. Pretty simple. Yeah, now, Charlo, there's even more things that we like to do here on about that time. I know we've had a lot of fun already. On about that time, we do something called astrology time. Okay. And we're, we have to go to another place okay. in order to achieve Oh, that's why that's time. down there. I Guys, thought there was like a massive is, dab we were going to do. Just like, ah. That, this is actually a rock of hash. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to dab Daily it. Daily tradition. Yeah, totally. Tradition it's a here. pound of, 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 of hash, actually. And we're going to dab it right now. Surprise. Gotcha. Hey, have you been a secret sesh? Uh, I mean, is it legal to go to Secret Sash? Because if it is, then yes. So what are we doing? Uh, we are in astrology time, Charlo. <laughs> um, so if the folks don't know, you yourself are an Aries, hey! much like me. I'm an Aries too. Hey! High five. That's an Aries high five. Shout out to all my Aries. Shout out to all my all my ah, signs, frankly. I think that's a ram. I know it's a longhorn, but can it ram, be a ram? Ram. We're ramming. Ah, we got Aries the rams. rams. That's true. Aries are rams. Lamb, Curly lamb rams. rams. We ramming. Yeah. That's the Aries. I'll take what, it. what? Critter I'll click. Take it. Critter R click. Rams. Critter click. Rams. Well, we're going to get shot when we leave. By who? No one's messing with the critter click. I don't know. The bitter click? <laughs> don't be bitter. <laughs> click at the critter click, guys. Knowledge from Charlo. Make sure you're listening right now. This is not an everyday <laughs> nugget you just got. Okay. Sun in Aries, moon in Gemini. Are you up on your moon? Do you, have you ever had your chart read before? No, I have are you, no are, idea what you're doing. Are you about. into the astrology? The closest I've come was attending a full moon ceremony with the weed nuns. Oh, full moon ceremony with the yeah, weed nuns. Yeah, we danced around the fire and they sang in a different language and it was... Chill, that sounds like a chill yeah, thing. Yeah, That's kind of astrological. Yeah. Okay, so well, Aries, moon in Gemini. Your moon is in Gemini. That's where it was when you okay. were born, like in your chart. Moon. Yeah, Joe, you know, I'm gonna say some of these sort of top line astrological descriptions. You can tell me whether you think they're accurate or not, and then okay. we, can, we can discuss it. Does that right. sound good? That sounds okay, good. so the next aspect, outside of the first two I mentioned, Jupiter in Taurus, means the planet Jupiter was in Taurus when you were born. Um, mm -hmm. She likes good things in life, and knows how to profit from them. She controls and administers her affairs and money well. True or false? 
Well, yeah, but that just seems so general, right? I don't know. You tell me. I mean, not everyone knows how to keep their paper straight. I'm just saying. But like, wouldn't everyone think they knew? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. You know? I mean, there are people that lack self-awareness. But mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, there's also a lot of people that are like, I just don't know what I'm doing with that stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. good with numbers. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're an independent businesswoman. So that's true. To me, it seems like that that could be fairly on point. Yeah. You know, not, every, not everyone's got that Charlo Green yet. muscle. Yeah, no, no. Right? Yes. So you're just putting, you're putting one and one together and making it into three. That's what I heard. That's alchemy, baby. Not everyone can do it. And that is alchemy, baby. <laughs> um, okay. The next one is the big U, Uranus, in Capricorn. A great battler. She has so much power, she thinks no one can defeat her. Her mission in society, in the world, means everything to her. Are you on a mission? Are you ready to battle for your mission? What's Uranus? It's a planet. Uranus? Nine planets. It's, it's not Uranus. Okay, I think that sometimes saying your anus sounds like a little goofy. You know what I mean? So like, I'll call it the big you. You're trying like, to come in here all classy and it's fancy. It's the big you. You know it's what I mean? It's your anus. All right, guys. Charlo wants us to cut the crap and be real. Please. Because straight up, it's your anus. It's your anus. It's a planet called Uranus. You know? Okay. It's a little goofy sounding. But so yes, I, I try, try to keep it polite. Yeah. I battling. am on a mission. <laughs> if you had to summarize that mission, what would you say like uh, the tagline for your mission would be? Charlo Green's mission. Dun, 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 dun. Um, I don't know if it's if it's like that. I'm more like being used as a tool to a vehicle make even. things happen. Yeah. A vehicle for change. Charlo Green. That's a pretty good one. Charlo Green. A vehicle for change. There there, I just is. gave you the tagline. There you it gave is. me a tagline. We traded taglines. We did. Yo, and we brought I it got back you to a tagline. You got me the critter <laughs> click. That's a very Uranus. even trade. That's how we do it. That's what happens when you smoke a really nice backwoods mm. with a good person. The weed was really good. THG Design. It thank was you. Delicious. Good weed on Mary <laughs> Jane's. About that time. It was really good. Hope you're having fun out there, guys, because we're having fun with Charlo Green yeah. in astrology time yeah. here on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. last Tuesday of January. Going up on a Tuesday. Yes. When in doubt, go up on a Tuesday. Do but it. don't start a riot because you might be on Expelled. bail. Expelled. Don't do it. Expelled or it's, eventually it's on bail. Or... It's all bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. But it's all good now. It is. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Third aspect. We're going to discuss the sextile between Mercury and Neptune. Mm -hmm. She can put down in writing everything that her imagination and intuition dictates do you are you good at documenting your imagination are you good at visualizing and manifesting the yeah, ideas that you have of course tell me about that that's a very special skill um well is it i think so i think I you take a lot of your skills for granted charlo well, I don't you're a know. special lady you gotta you gotta take a second to just appreciate yourself um i guess i know it is visualizing but i used to consider it like daydreaming with my eyes open when I was a kid. So it's just kind of something that I am just used to doing. I just have new language to explain it. Um, I, I know it's that. really useful. I know I love, do you read? I do read actually. Do you listen like audiobooks? Cause I do listen because as an shit. LA resident now, I have to drive. So you sometimes you throw to. on a good audiobook and that can be your entertainment as, no, you, as you transport yourself. No, seriously. If you commute like one hour one way, another hour to get home, that's two hours in, maybe two, yeah. three car rides, you've read a book that would have taken you Weeks. forever. Weeks. Because you wouldn't have done it. You would you have know? kept putting it off. Exactly. Or oh, just, like, I gotta put go to dinner. I no. gotta go to dinner. Oh, I gotta. Do something? You yeah, know. so I have made it a habit to read at least a few books a week. So I've read dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of books, I don't know. Um, but the thing that most of the ones I find most use useful always go back to is how you have to visualize, how you have to see to believe. It's not, is it seeing is believing? They do say that. No, no, it's believing is seeing. You have to believe that you can do it. You have to put yourself there and then maybe reverse engineer it and actually start working toward what you actually see to get there. So that just kind of guides how. Guys, About That Time has some real ass life advice on this show, <laughs> including life advice from the one and only Charlo Green. That's a rarity. Like, I know that we're not charging you anything for this. We should but be. Charlo is giving you gems. You could take this to a diamond <laughs> dealer and potentially, potentially trade it for some sort of fiat currency. <laughs> These gems that Charlo has just given you. Visualize it, guys. Or if get you, you some Bitcoin while it's still low. While it's still low, guys. Bitcoin <laughs> is an option. A secure <laughs> yes. and, 
and yes. anonymous transactions Take that occur. Take this advice and turn it into Bitcoin. Or donate some Bitcoins to Charlo to Ooh, thank her. Did you hear about, um, who was it that decided to sell? Oh, it was 50 Cent, of course. He's just the goat. Um, but in like, yeah, Maybe. he forgot that he had sold his album for Bitcoin and then discovered that he yeah. had a couple mil in the bank. Yes, send me your Bitcoin. Send me your unwanted Curtis, cryptocurrency. Mr. Curtis. <laughs> Mr. Curtis should send you a couple Bitcoins, I think. Uh, I think we can make Charlo. like a really cool project or something. Both yeah. of us give very few fucks. Um, 50, have, holler at Charlo. She's down to collaborate. Make something happen. And and you, Mr. Editor-in-Chief of Snoop and his unfulfilled promise to the people of Alaska, which I'm just going to go ahead and, and take for a promise to me because... All right. I'm taking that <laughs> promise for myself. We you may have promised something. it to many, but I am, for, I am now taking that promise for me. That's cool, Charlo. <laughs> Just grabbing those promises up. Uh, if they're hey, out Alaska. there, if hey, they're, Alaska. If they're watching, we fuck with Alaska. Then they're though. writing hate mail. Do you go back so, to Alaska? <laughs> no. Never back to Alaska. Sorry, guys. It's pretty mm -hmm. nice here in Cali. Yeah. When you can I go have for to like go a, back for my trial. A cruise. Uh, oh yeah. But you go for a cruise. <laughs> you make something out of it. You go for a cruise or, and then have your trial. Uh, no. Pass on the Alaska cruise. Yeah. You've been there. Well, yes, of course. So. It's more exotic for folks that, that have it. Exactly. It is a beautiful place to visit. Everyone should go at least once. It's incredible. Just make sure that you are able to leave. Make sure you're able to leave, guys. Yeah. Don't get stuck up in Alaska. Do not be black in Alaska. Don't, I mean. <laughs> Don't be that, Noah. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Charlo's, Charlo's saying, speaking some very <laughs> real truths easy, here on our program. Pulling a Kanye. Pulling a Kanye yeah. on, a, on occasion. Uh, yeah. Not always, but on occasion. You're my, is it power, Mike Powers? That his name? Uh, no, I believe that is uh, the man Austin who played Powers. Austin Powers. Um, his Mike name Myers. is Mike Myers. Um, but that's pretty good. That was kind of like a re was, that's like a mashup. That's was, kind of a mashup. It was. That was it good. Was, it was. But yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I don't I don't feel I feel you're speaking truth and I support it. So um, you know you're gonna have to go back to class to figure it out. Uh, mm -hmm. One more element on tonight's installment of About That Time is the conjunction between Mars and Neptune. The description reads. Her feelings are dominated by wisdom and geared toward the ideal. She likes water, sea voyages. Now here's the twist. Mm. She likes odd people. Do you like to surround yourself with some weirdos, Charlo? I do. Uh, that's so funny. I Weirdo was laughing addict. about that earlier. Like I love really awkward situations where people don't really know how to react. Just because I'm more like, um, I feel like I'm watching it and it's more of a story. So whenever I'm like, in really, really shitty circumstances, I can kind of step back. But when it's like awkward and weird, it's like, oh, what is he gonna do? <laughs> I don't know, it just Who knows? tickles me. It's I love just it. weird. Do you wanna give a shout out to an odd person in your life? No, I don't, I don't. Odd person in Charlo's life. <laughs> She's protecting your identity because she's outed you for being odd. This lady is too classy for words. No, all of my friends are really, re everyone that I value in my life is really weird. Like normal people are creepy. I Like I know you're a sociopath. I know you got filthy shit on your, if you're so normal, like that's just really weird to me. Fess up people. Yeah, Don't fake it. Yeah. We know, we know so you. So all let, my people let are weird. Let your freak fat flag fly. Let it fly. In the wind. Mm -hmm. Mary Jane, about that time, potentially on a cruise in Alaska where you started a riot. It could happen, I'm just saying. It anyway, could. that concludes our installment of Astrology Time. I really appreciate <laughs> your taking this journey to another world. Um, Thanks for taking me. Yeah, no, it was, it was really our pleasure. Now, wow, we're back. Here we are, back, guys. Whew. About that time, Astrology Zone, uh, Astrology mm -hmm. Time. Uh, we have been chilling with Charlo Green, the one and only host of The Weed, icon of the cannabis community. Charlo, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the people that they, you think they should be aware of that's on the horizon for you in 2018 besides all of the wonderful things we've already discussed? Um, no, there is not. Guys, you got a glimpse into the mind of Charlo. You chilled with us on about that time. She's saying, keep in touch, 2018. Just make sure your eyes are open, guys, because there's gonna be a lot of cool things happening yeah? from Charlo, from Mary Jane, from about that time, from the Critter Click. Gang, gang. Critter, click, guys. Yeah. We rep in the critter click. That was about that time, guys. Thanks yeah. for checking in with us. It has been a great Tuesday. Tune into the weed. Tune into the weed. It's yes. on the internet. I have a funny feeling you know how it works. <laughs> Peace. Cool.